Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, friends and colleagues from all over the world. Today, uh, we have two special guests, our host, uh, 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 Dr. Joseph Minatala, and the world-renowned um, endodontist, uh, family man, author, inspirer, motivator, Dr. Rico Short. Uh, thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. So today is another um, webinar of a series of complimentary webinars that we have brought together as part of our peer-to-peer -peer collaboration and concept to reach as many doctors and uh, dental professionals across the world with, um, with uh, knowledge that, uh, uh, that may benefit them in their private practice in life. And that said, uh, we have uh, uh, a very nice program for you today about uh, uh, endodontics. You know, implantologists usually begin when endodontists get done, uh, but uh, we all have a duty uh, to, uh, to listen to Dr. Short and his uh, presentation about how to relax and then make sure that you exhaust all of your options with natural teeth before you start thinking that way, because natural teeth will always be better uh, 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 what God gave us than uh, what we can ever uh, ever put back into a patient's mouth. With that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and Dr. Uh, Atala, you have the floor for the kind introduction. Dr. Short, we're very happy to have you today and uh, we're very honored and uh, uh, everyone knows about you from your uh, books, your articles and your lectures. Uh, I'm going to read a few uh, uh, of your credentials so like people can know a little bit more about you before you start. Uh, sure. Dr. Short is a board certified endodontist, author, and speaker. In addition, he is an expert spokesperson for the new context of the American Dental Association. It's a special organization representing approximately 161,000 U.S. dentists. He's also the root canal specialist to the start. Dr. Short has over 20 years of experience in dentistry and over 17 years in endodontics. He is a member and a fellow International College of Dentists, a graduate of the ADA Institute of Diversity in Leadership Program and an ADA success speaker. He is also an expert consultant in endodontics to the Georgia Board of Dentistry and an assistant clinical professor at the Dental College of Georgia in Augusta. Dr. Short is an independent national lecturer and is endorsed by the American Association of Endodontics Speakers Bureau. Dr. Short has written numerous articles and published in several journals, including Dentistry Today. He made the exclusive cover April 2013, um, Inside Dentistry, Upscale Magazine, Rolling Out Magazine, and the Journal of Endodontics. In addition, he has published over 1,000 articles on social media involving case studies in endodontics. They are called the Short Case of the Day, in which he has um, a robust worldwide following of over 100,000 deaths. Dr. Schultz is also a motivational speaker and author. His previous book entitled Getting to the Root of Your Problem, 365 Days of Inspirational Thinking, is considered one of the most thought-provoking self-published books to date. His new book, In the Eye of a Storm, details his journey through a potential career-ending eye injury. He travels abroad, teaching people to tap into their God-given potential. Um, and make a positive difference in society. To Angela Short, who is a dental hygienist, they have two children, Jayla and Eva. And I've been following you, doctor, on Facebook a lot, and uh, it's wonderful the work and the family man that you are. We're happy and very honored to have you today, and we're very excited about uh, uh, what we're going to be seeing. <laughs> Welcome. I think I'm muted. Am I okay? Yeah, yeah. No. Yes, yeah. Okay. So thank you for that one for wonderful introduction. It's great to be a part of the um, of the group, the GIS group. Um, been able to touch dentists um, and other specialists all over the world, and this has been been a heartbeat of mine to be able to touch people that probably won't have access to the knowledge information that we have here in the United States and around the world. So we prepared a special video for you, so you can actually go and see when to relax and when to extract. And I know I'm here with a bunch of people that love implants. I love implants too, only if the tooth can't be saved. In fact, I'm gonna need an implant. I actually 
had a root canal that serviced me well for over 20 years. And I had, I had a, um, a, a Tic Tac battle. Anybody know what Tic Tac is? Some hard candy with my daughter. We wanted to see who can eat the, eat the most of it um, at the same time. And I bit down and um, actually cracked the root that I had with a, with a root canal. I had to get that extracted. And now I'm going to go into um, implant world. So not only I um, support implants, um, if you can't save your natural tooth, I'm gonna need one on tooth number two. So, so the the um, the presentation I prepare for you guys is gonna go through a lot of different things. It's gonna go through things um, pretty fast. So make sure you have a pen and pencil or, or, or some notes ready. Um, it's gonna be talking about um, how to save teeth that would otherwise have to be extracted. I talk about different techniques um, dealing with apexogenesis, apexification, and regenerative endodontics. Um, I talk about um, comparing a root canal um, treated to, to an implant and the longevity and some of the issues we have actually um, in both of those situations. Uh, I talk a little bit about some trauma, not a lot. I talk a little bit about um, external cervical resorption, how to diagnose it and how to treat it. And um, some other things too um, in this um, roughly probably about 30, 45 minute um, presentation um, that I have for you guys. So, and I want to say thank you for all you guys that have been following me all over the world i appreciate your support and i appreciate those who have been praying for me during this crazy eye injury i had um, in september and being able to come back to work by the grace of god in march and doing what i love which is um, root canals so um, without further ado i hope you really enjoy this presentation that i specially prepared for you today Thank you, Dr. Short. We'll uh, go ahead and put up your presentation <clears throat> and we look forward to uh, seeing you uh, soon. Thank you for uh, coming on for the intro. Hey, thank, thank you, Kenor, for that uh, warm welcome. When he invited me to come and speak, I was like, are you crazy? I'm not going to be in a whole bu a bunch of room with a bunch of implant colleges. I mean, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you know what? At the end of the day, we all are dentists. At the end of the day, we all, will, all should do what's right. And we all should want to save the patient's natural tooth. That's why we went to dental school. So today, I'm going to give you guys something a little different, something, a, a little different flavor of what you guys probably been hearing for the past couple of days. And so because of a lack of time, I'm going to ask you guys to limit questions. If you guys come up, with, come up to me, with any type of weapon, I have plenty of security that's gonna take care of me. I think I have some, some Russian uh, people that's gonna really be the mafia and protect me. I'm just kidding. So, um, but we're just gonna have fun. I, I only got 30 minutes and I got about five hours worth of material. I'm gonna condense it down and we're gonna have a good time. So people wanna say, okay, who am I? I'm gonna show you a little quick video and you'll be able to see exactly who I am. All right. Did y'all read the one? Okay, okay, hold on. I'm sorry.
All right. So that's a little bit about who I am. And people are like, well, I've seen you before. I've seen you on maybe TV. You see me in a magazine. And I really, you know, I, I don't look at myself as a celebrity. But anybody know anything about Atlanta, Georgia? That's where a lot of the celebrities live at now. And just because I've worked on quite a few celebrities, someone said, hey, you might as well call yourself the root canal special to the stars. I was like, nah, that's a little cheesy. I don't want to do that. It's like, well, you see all the celebrities anyway. You know, and everybody's moving from L.A. to Atlanta anyway. You might as well take a hold of that niche. So I did. And because of that, I've seen numerous celebrities, actors, actresses. And guess what? All of them want to save the natural, too. That's what they want. That is always going to be the first option for them. And also all the other patients that come in, because everybody wants to try to keep their natural, too. And this is a quote by Don Quixote. Tooth is much more to be prized than a diamond. How many women here likes diamonds? Raise your hand. All right. How many men like diamonds? So you take out all the men's teeth. They don't care. All right. So, so this walks in your office. Let's go through this scenario. So this patient has had severe headaches, lower left jaw pain. He's like, oh, man, this thing is killing me. He went to see his general dentist, an oral surgeon, a physician. He went to an ENT, and no one can help him. This guy spent about $4,000 trying to solve his issue on that lower left jaw pain. So can you guys tell me one other thing that could be causing some lower left, pain, left, lower left jaw pain that's not odontogenic? Heart attack, absolutely. So he could be having a heart attack. So they went, got all this blood work done, everything came back normal. He was placed on some medication, some antibiotics. So some antibiotics actually gave him some temporary relief. Was he a drug seeker? You know, anybody ever have patients that are drug seekers, just crazy people? Like, man, I don't know what's going on. Get out of here. Go see the endodontist. Go see the oral surgeon. But get out of my office, right? Well, come to find out, he came to my office. We took a PA. And I don't see much going on over here. Do anybody see a lot going on? No, not really. So what do we do? We want to extract. We want to wait, refer, pulp test it. So what we ended up doing is we did some pulp testing. And we ended up finding out that this guy actually had a micro crack right into the uh, distal pulp horn of this tooth right here. So we did the endo and it went away. This is one of the hardest cases to diagnose, these partial necrotic pulps with a micro crack. Why? Because the antibiotics gave him a little relief. So when you're dealing with teeth with multi-rooted canals, you can have part of the root vital and the other part necrotic. So he takes the antibiotic, he says, yeah, that gives me a little bit of relief. Why? Because the antibiotic took care temporarily the part of the tooth that was necrotic. But anytime you have cases like this, the cone beam will not give you the answer. And I know that there are a lot of cone beam companies that say, hey, you buy my cone beam, I'm going to show you where the crack is. That is not true. The only thing cone beam will show you typically is a macro crack. And I don't want to get too much into detail with that because that cone beam has a lot, a lot of great uses. And if you want to know more about my viewpoint on cone beam CT, I actually wrote a viewpoint article in Dentistry Today about two months ago, which I got some really good mail and I got a lot of hate mail. But you can check it out and you let me know what you guys think. So um, today we're going to be talking about relax, don't extract here. My office is located right outside of Atlanta in Smyrna, Georgia. I think Ron said his girlfriend lives in Smyrna, Georgia, so he is one of my secret agent people that's going to protect me just in case I get attacked by an implantologist or something like that. I want to thank Edge Endo for sponsoring this lecture. Um, my disclosure, I have no financial ties with this company or any other dental company out there. And when I write articles and things like that, I like to make sure I give people non-biased, the most up-to-date, evidence-based information. So how, how many guys are general dentists in here? My short hands. Oh, man. All right. This is awesome. All right. So when this comes into your office here and this patient wants to save a tooth, will you extract or relax? Extract. All right. And they want and they want to save the tooth. So you would still take it out. OK, that's fine. So I want to show you just a case of I did this case. This patient did not want to have the tooth taken out. And so I was very fortunate to use a lot of the current endo files. And again, I am not, you know, promoting any company, anything like that. I just tell you what I use. So um, Edge Endo is a new company and they have 
X files, which is a universal file, and that's able to allow us to do these kind of cases right here. And so this case was able to be successfully done and um, it got restored and then the patient still has the tooth. And so the way we typically would normally try to obturate these kind of cases is one vertical condensation, but you can't get the heat within five millimeters of the apex. So then now we're into the new bioceramic stuff, the new bioceramic technology. Now they have bioceramic gutta percha, bioceramic sealer, and guess what? You don't need heat. This is almost kind of like a single cone type of deal, and we're dependent on the bioceramic sealer for the seal, not the gutta percha. In fact, the gutta percha is just a carrier to take the sealer down to the apex, and if you ever have to retreat it, you can actually go through the gutta percha, and that can help you be able to retreat these kind of cases. So this is that viewpoint article that I had wrote uh, for dentistry today. And again, this is my disclosure. I just want to tell you guys the truth with the best current evidence-based research. And everything that I talk about is not financially driven. I've been approached by all the dental diff different dental um, companies from Brassler to Densply. Hey, we want you to speak, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, look, I want to give people the truth. If I sign that document, you're going to tell me what you want them to say to make a dollar. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. So I'm one of the only few ones out here that can talk about a myriad of products and also give non-evidence, well, evidence-based, non-biased information. So some of our course objectives. So I want, I want you guys to understand how to diagnose teeth properly. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about bioceramics, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to handle teeth with immature apices. So let's jump into diagnosis here. So, this patient was misdiagnosed for years. They went all through endo. They went through um, apicals and all that kind of stuff. And people always ask me, what's the best file? What's the best, you know, and I'm like, look, if you don't know how to diagnose properly, that won't matter. So this patient actually had underlying trigeminal neuralgia, and the general dentist was doing everything, trying to figure it out, and then eventually this resulted in a lawsuit. So diagnosis is key. Um, this is a good friend of mine, and I'm glad to be in the L.A. area. This is Josh Powell. He's a two-time NBA champion, played for the Lakers. Um, he's a good friend of mine. I hang out with him all the time. Got a chance to put on the rings, and I'm like, man, so when you become an NBA champion, how do you do it? He said, you got to have a game plan. He said, if you don't have a game plan, you can't win. And that's what I come in to talk to you guys about. What's the game plan? Do you want to try to save the tooth? Is it, can it be saved, or do you need to take it out and have it extracted? So it starts off by listening to the patient. What is the patient's chief complaint? And you put all that information together, and then that's how you come up with the diagnosis. What about this case? By show of hands, you see this line running here? Who thinks this is cracked? We got, at least we got one honest person in the room. All right. What else could this be? Do, do you need to extract it? What else is it? Palatal root. This was not a crack. It was the PDL from the palatal root right there. But this tooth was getting ready to get extracted and get an implant. The patient came to see me for a second opinion, and I was like, no, we just need to retreat it. We retreat it. We found an MB tooth that's there 90 95% of the time, and we took care of the case. Um, no problem. Patient was able to get it restored. So you definitely want to just relax and don't extract it. And it's very fortunate that, again, in Atlanta, I get to see a lot of the cool artists and rappers and all that kind of stuff. And trust me, they want to keep their teeth. And they want to be able to perform, do big shows. And they can actually do that right away after a root canal, if it's done properly. So this is another case uh, here that came to my office. They were going to extract this because they thought the root was cracked. And they actually thought this was a lateral periodontal cyst. But come to find out, it was just another canal. It was just a distal buccal canal of this upper maxillary second premolar that was just missed. It had three canals in it. And we see that probably 30% of the time. This is another case, same thing. The GP, he said, hey, you know what? I, I found the main canal. This patient started having some symptoms. So they missed the MB and they missed the palatal. So in this case, we're able to retreat it. And um, I use a microscope, able to retreat that. And you can see here, mesial buccal, palatal, distal buccal, tooth is able to be restored and be fine. So what about diagnostic testing? There's so many different diagnostic tests you can do for endo. I'm only going to talk about two. One is the cold test. This is the main one that I use to check if the tooth is vile or not. 
Um, you want to make sure you use a cotton pellet and not a Q-tip because a Q-tip, the wood on a Q-tip can remove some of the, the, the cold part and then you'll get false, false, uh, res, uh, false testing with that. Um, pulp testing with electric pulp test is really critical on cases, especially dealing with older people where their pulps have receded. So this actually can give you a better idea of what's going on with the pulp. It doesn't tell you the health of the pulp, it tells you the pulp is vital or not. So it's really good for calcified canals, but unfortunately you can't use it with crowns and restorations. CBCT, you guys probably already know a lot about that. You heard a lot about CBCT. CBCT can help us a lot in endo, especially if we're doing a lot of surgery. Do a lot of endo surgery, you wanna know where you are, anatomical landmarks. Uh, one cool thing about CBCT, it shows us where some of these root resorptions are located that we can't see on traditional 2D x-rays. But CBCT should not be a replacement for conventional 2D radiography. Because I do know there are a lot of endodontists, they comb beam everybody that come in there. And I think that's overused and abused. And we see that all the time. And I'm like, you have to, you know, use your discretion. I mean, if you have, you know, if you're going hunting, you know, it depends on what you're hunting for, you gotta pick the right gun, you know? And if you don't do that, you're gonna create some problems. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, trying to shoot a bird with a 12 gauge shotgun. You try to pick the bird up, it's probably not gonna be much left. So you wanna make sure you choose your tools appropriately. Um, <clears throat> one thing about CBCT, um, you have to make sure that that slice is in the accurate area. Um, with endo, we're able to use limited field of view or small few CBCT that helps us center on what we need to look at. And it also can probably help us in some liability issues if you're not properly trained and you miss something like cancer, Lord forbid, or something like that. So most endodontists, they use limited field of view and then they also want to make sure they use the Alara principle as low as reasonable, achievable, dealing with the radiation. In other words, you don't want to just give everybody um, a cone beam when they come in there. So this is one case here um, about external cervical resorption. This is a, you can see the traditional um, x-ray here. You can see some resorption here, and you can see it here on the CBCT. Well, there's no way you'll be able to get this image from a 2D uh, picture. You won't be able to know what's going on. In a lot of these cases, unfortunately, I see it get extracted. And people don't know a lot of these cases can be taken care of by an endodontist who understands external cervical resorption. So here's some classifications. Class one, this is by Heather say, class two, class three, class four. When you start getting to class four, you, we probably, you're talking about implant for sure. This one, um, you can probably do this without even doing endo. This is actually more of a, I tell people, external cervical resorption is more of a periodontal defect than an endo problem because the pulp doesn't really have anything to do with it. So when you start talking about class two, you get closer to the pulp, then if you go in there, you try to repair this with some Geristore or what have you, you're gonna get closer to the pulp and you're probably gonna irritate the pulp, so you might as well go ahead and do endo. Something like this would probably require flap surgery, endo flap surgery on the buccal and lingual to take care of that um, defective tissue caused from the osteoclast. So I'm pretty sure you guys have seen things like this, pink tooth and mummery or whatever, you call it. So this is a sign of external cervical resorption. See that little pink there? And you know, what do you do? Do you just go ahead and take the tooth out when you see something like this? You know, what you want to do is make sure that you understand what's going on and possibly team up with the endodontist that may even the periodontist to try to save this tooth. Um, so here we go here. We can see that um, external cervical resorption there. Um, ortho is the number one predisposing factor in 25% of the cases. So most people are gonna have ortho, and that's the first thing I ask is, have you had ortho? Bam, I already know, it's external cervical resorption. The question is, how long has this been going on? Because most of these patients are asymptomatic. So do you just watch them? Do you just watch it fail? You know, what do you do? When do you, when do you intervene, so to speak? Um, and guess what? This can happen between one, a year and a half and 33 years after ortho. 33 years after ortho, this thing can just pop up out of nowhere. Then what happens is the patient say, well, you know, I've been going to my dentist and why he haven't said anything about it? Who's liable? So, you know, it's one of those things you definitely don't want to close a blind eye. You want to look for these kind of things um, because these, if you catch it early, you can really save it and keep it for a long time if it's treated properly. 
So this is a little schematic on how external cervical resorption looks here. The, the thing with external cervical resorption that it won't go to um, um, demineralized tissue, it'll kind of stop. It won't even go into the pulp. So it'll eat around the pulp, but it won't go into the pulp, which is a pretty interesting phenomenon dealing with external cervical resorption. And this is a histological picture of the same thing. And like I said, you have to do flap surgery. I won't go into too much detail because I don't have a lot of time. You, flap, you do flap surgery, you lightly curatage the area, you treat the area with tricyclic acid. The tricyclic acid actually um, is supposed to kill the osteoclast and adonoclast to keep that from happening again. And then you restore it with Gerostore. We found out that Gerostore, you can get some attachment, reattachment of the PDL with Gerostore. So this is a case, it's not my case, but this is kind of a similar case you can kind of go through that this patient um, ended up having some issues there. They got a 2D image, 3D image, showed you where there's resorption of the buccal and lingual. This thing was flapped, cleaned out, Gerostore's place. They ended up doing the endo because they knew they would be into the pulp or get close enough to the pulp that it would cause some issues. So they went ahead and did the endo and then they restored the tooth. Uh, this is a case of mine, external cervical resorptive case is an 11-year-old kid. She didn't have any pain. She had a history of stage one ortho. So here it is back here. And if you look at it really closely with a bite wing, this almost kind of looked like the cave, but it's not. Because when you poke it, it's going to feel like a honeycomb, and it's going to bleed really, really profusely. So make sure you don't confuse this with the cave, because it's not. Um, like I said, you won't get a real stick um, with the Explorer. You kind of feel like the Explorer goes right through it. And so this particular case, um, um, the kid, the mom did not want to do surgery. So she was like, well, what else can we do to try to save this tooth? And I don't want my kid to be in pain. I said, well, we go in here, we do endo. So when we did endo, um, we cleaned everything out. We actually used some um, bioceramic sealer and we used some MTA, which is also a bioceramic. And the thought is since the MTA, MTA has a high pH, it can slow down the resorptive process because it, it definitely will create a more healing environment, more alkaline environment, and hopefully uh, arrest the resorption, or at least long enough so this kid can get old enough to possibly end up getting an implant there. So this is another view of uh, uh, talking about CBCT, some advantages. Um, Tower said that as long as the root canal is not filled, you can definitely see a lot of vertical, root, horizontal root fractures and also vertical root fractures. In but if it is filled, it's going to create an issue. It's gonna, you're going to see a lot of scatter radiation. You won't be able to really see what you need to be dealing with these um, micro areas. So some, what are some of the disadvantages of CBCT? Well, uh, the dentist has to be really trained to read the CBCT. Um, you have to make sure your, your um, equipment is calibrated. Um, some of the studies show that you've got to have a, 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 um, a really sensitive display. You just can't use like a traditional uh, laptop display. And also CBCT, and I heard one of the other speakers say that you, it's not, you can't evaluate soft tissue with CBCT. Uh, what are some other disadvantages? Like I said before, you have scatter dealing with a post or a crown, and they say, oh, well, we got some software that can limit that scatter. I mean, they have some, but it won't completely eliminate the scatter. And in our world, as endodontists, I mean, we are down to microns. We, we need to see if that micro vertical root fracture is really there or not because that's our Achilles heel. So we know that um, the vertical root fracture has to be within four degrees of the fracture plane for the CBCT to pick it up. And I already talked about artifacts that can hinder your ability to be able to see the crack um, as well. And so currently there's insufficient evidence to suggest that a CBCT is a reliable test in detecting vertical root fractures in root canal treated teeth. And Chang did that study in the Journal of Endodontics in 2016. So what about the vertical root fractures? How can we see those? Well, Walton produced an article back in JADA in February 2017, and he said pretty much to see these micro vertical root fractures that won't show up on your traditional PA, they probably won't show up on your CBCT. So how do we find it? You gotta lay a flap. And you have to look, physically to look and see that vertical root fracture. And we know that's our Achilles heel. Those are the ones we will be sending to the implantologists or the people who like to do implants to take the tooth out and place the implant. In the future, as CBCT changes and get more high def, maybe we'll be able to see some of these in the future. And that would truly be a game changer. But until now, 
you know, the CBCT will not detect micro vertical root fractures, which is our Achilles heel. Now, what the CBCT will detect is bone loss. You will be able to see the bone loss, but you, you'd be like, where's that bone loss coming from? There's been plenty of cases, if I got time to show you guys, that there are cases that looks like the root is cracked, but it's a, it's a lesion from, from, a, from a root canal that's not working. So accurate diagnosis is a marriage of art, science, and experience. Let's talk a little bit about pulpal and periodontal um, relationship. Well, this is the relationship. A healthy pulp rules out endo. If you got a healthy pulp, pulp, pulp tissue, you don't need to do endo. Unhealthy pulp tissue, it can cause the periodontal status to break down. So what about a case like this, where you have a situation where the previous root canal was done, the bone is broken down. I can tell you, I've seen some of these cases already here that most of you guys would extract this tooth. Because I've sat in here long enough and I've seen teeth like that, and I'm like, man, I could have saved that tooth. Because they see the bone broken down, oh, this looks like crap, you know. But this patient didn't want to lose the tooth, so I decided to go ahead and retreat the case. We put calcium hydroxide, this is a two-year recall with nice healing in that furcation. So what about a case like this? This case is from Dr. Mo Hamill out of Amman Jordan, who's a Facebook friend of mine. So if you guys aren't on Facebook, get on Facebook. There's a lot of cool things going on. You can watch, you can see a lot of surgeries, a lot of cases. I, I post on Facebook daily. I do the short case of the day. And it, it's an awesome event where you can kind of learn a lot, ask questions without even having to pay. So it's a great tool. So I saw this case. This is a pretty cool case that he did. He did endo, it was a lateral canal. We lost some bone here. And after, what, six months or so, however that time, oh, oh, five years, actually, I'm sorry. And look, even grew some a bone back vertically. I mean, that's amazing to be able to do that. So what about the endoperio pathways? We know we have some primary endo that causes perio issues, vice versa. We have some concomitant issues where it's a combination of both. I don't have a whole lot of time to get into that. But um, these are some of the pathways that, that, that can create these issues. Patient came in right here. How many, how many people think this is a perio defect? Raise your hand. So he said the pen could have caused that. Yeah, it could have caused that. So perio defect, raise your hand. Perio defect, endo issue, maybe. Uh, primary endo, all right. Well, this case, we always trace the sinus tract and it led right here. The patient didn't want to lose the tooth. We got in there, um, we did endo. I'm sorry. We did endo, and when I got in the microscope, there was a defect here. So we filled that defect with MTA. We filled the rest of this root with gutta percha. We brought the patient back six months, and you can see some nice healing. So you go from here to here, and this patient was thrilled they didn't have to take the tooth out and do an implant because the issue was um, it was endo. So a healthy pulp, pulp rules out endodontic treatment. Anybody heard of actor? Ben Stein, pretty cool guy, Bueller. Um, you know, when I told him I did, in, I was root canal specialist, he ran the other way. But, uh, but anyway, a vital pulp um, promotes root development. We're gonna talk a little bit about that as well, about um, when should you do a pexogenesis, a pexification, and regenerative endodontics. So you wanna try to keep the pulp alive as long as possible. Pexogenesis, um, that allows us to be able to keep the tooth alive, and these are especially critical on kids because we wanna make sure we can maintain that tooth as long as possible, at least to get them to see you guys for an implant, right? So this is a case, to do a pexogenesis, the pulp must be vital. And this is a case on tooth number 19. One thing about these kids is that they have very high pulp horns. So a lot of times what'll happen is you can do a very conservative restoration and the kid's like, oh, this is hurting, or the tooth can become necrotic. It's not something that you did wrong. That's just the anatomy of the tooth. And we see this a lot in kids. I work on a lot of kids in Atlanta. Most of the time, the endodontists won't see kids in my area until they're at least 12 or 13. I see them as young as six. So we, I see this a lot. So how many people can do a root canal predictably on a case like this? The end of the root is wide open. You can't. So you want to try to keep the pulp alive. And this um, allowed me to be on the cover of dentistry today back in 2013 because I have a technique to use MTA uh, for root, mat root maturization. And I won't go into all that. You can Google it, you can see it. It's a step-by-step -step cookbook, and it'll show you how I do it. Um, yeah, so this is me working on the kid, kind of actually doing here. that same procedure. Um, unfortunately, because of time, I won't be able to show you guys the whole video. Um, 
but just trust me that at the end of the day, it turned out like this. So we got some vital pulp here. We got the MTA, and today you can use MTA, you can use bioceramic putty, you can use biodentine. There's so many different bioceramics out there. You can use now whatever that you are comfortable using, whatever is more cost effective, that has the best research. You can use that, put that right onto the pulp here. And on this case, that's what I did. Um, this was MTA though. Um, we covered the pulp up, six month recall, brought the patient back. You wanna make sure you get these on recalls. And to your recall, you can see that we got some nice healing and also the root continues to mature. So what about if the case is non-vital? What if, what if the case is an open apex? Then you can't do the same thing. And this is traditionally what we used to do. We used to do cases where um, if, if, the, if the apex was open, it's non-vital, you can't do apexogenesis. Apexogenesis need vital tissue. So in a case like this, um, okay, I'm gonna really speed up. I'm gonna go through some cases here. Case like this, um, this is teeth um, eight and nine on a young girl. And this is, I did this long time in my residency. We did endo, we placed calcium hydroxide. Um, we had to wait six months for a barrier to form before you fill it with obturation material, with gutta percha. So, and this is what we used to do. Now, the problem is you don't get any root thickness or anything like that. So we don't really do that anymore. So you have cases like this, immediate apexification, have a lesion with an open apex. Um, I'm gonna kind of go through this um, really quickly. Um, I use a map system so I can know exactly where to place the MTA right at the apex. And then you can just put a post, build it up, and then put your restoration there. Generative endodontics is what we're into now. So instead of using um, cases where you have an open apex and use a pexification, you can do regenerative endodontics. And I also have an article, a CE article as well in Dentistry Today. And again, this is a cookbook and show you how I do it, which is probably different from some other endodontists. But basically, we know that at the root, there are stem cells there. And we can bring those stem cells back up to the tooth and kind of turn the tooth back on to allow the root to mature. So this is a case, it was a Denzi vaginitis case. I'm kind of go through this real quick because I'm running out of time and I got so much more information. So I'm just gonna kind of buzz through here real quick. So we know that those stem cells are at the epithelial root sheath. Um, let's see here, da 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 da. So this is another case here. Um, we're doing a procedure here. We put calcium hydroxide in here to disinfect it. We close it with some cavit. We brought the patient back in a month. We put MTA there. This is MTA. And then we brought the patient back in one year, and then we get apical closure there. So now this case, this patient can, got, can go through ortho. They can move the tooth. Why? Because they have a ligament. And that's the luxury of what we do, being able to save the tooth. You have a ligament. You can do ortho. You can't do ortho with an implant. You don't have the ligament. So it allows the kids to still go through the orthodontic treatment or even adults as well. The only problem is now we found out that the ProRoot MTA, what I used to use, it can stain the tooth so it can make it turn a little purple there. So now with all the new bioceramic technology here, um, you can use all these different products. And again, I, I don't get paid by any of these companies. This actually works, but this will cause a lot of staining. So we don't really use this a lot for this procedure anymore. So I'm gonna buzz through this. This is pretty much the same kind of thing here. And the only difference between this one and the other one is the fact that um, it shows you that it doesn't stain. Same thing with this case here. A young girl and um, here it is, instead of having to have that tooth taken out, we get some, um, some regenerative um, cells to start closing off that apex and we get in our PDL back here. So um, I'm gonna kinda run through this real quick. Do, do endo cases fail, do patients fail to heal? And a lot of times we have to make sure we don't put the cart before the horse because sometimes you can do the best root canal, but guess what, the root canal may not work. And then you wanna blame yourself, but you, know, you gotta remember just like Dr. Sammy said, we have a host, we have a person on the other side of that. And if that person's body decides not to heal, it doesn't matter how good you are or what kind of technique you use, it won't work. So I'm just kind of go through this real quick here and try to get through some of this stuff here. And I'm sorry, I've never had to do a uh, 30 minute uh, lecture, but I'm doing the best I can to kind of show you guys some cool stuff here. So um, 
Going through this endo versus implant, you can't really con compare the two because one of them is, you know, is it success, is survivability. So it's kind of comparing apples to oranges there. But at the end of the day, long term, um, there's no difference between a properly done endodontic treatment case um, and a properly done single rooted, um, I mean, um, implant case as well. So this came to my office, and how many guys would say that this is a failure? Raise your hand. All right. And I would, I would tend to agree. Now, this case, this was done 30 years ago. The patient was asymptomatic, and he said, I don't want you to touch that tooth. I'm having pain on this one. So in this patient's mind, this was a, was a success. And as dentists, we look at certain things. It's like, oh, it doesn't look good. This patient was in fully function, asymptomatic on something like this. In that particular patient's mind, and when I listened to the patient, this was a success. Even though as clinicians, we look at this and say, like, man, this is not. So um, I'm going to kind of skip towards the end here because I know I'm running out of time here. Um, Ran out of time. I ran out of time. I ran out of time. So they're, they're rushing me off the stage here. So this is the last, this is the last case I want to show you guys here. Um, and this is a case where the endo, this had surgery, had a root canal. And I don't know, I guess the root canal gods pulled the gutta perch out and dissolved it. The patient didn't want to get an implant. So we were able to retreat it. We use bioceramic coated cones now. So bioceramics, like Sammy was talking about, it's, it's, it's the next thing. So it's happening. So um, even in endodontics, so we use a bioceramic cone, we use some bioceramic sealer, we completed this case, brought the patient back in six months, really beautiful healing there. They'll get many more years out of this tooth. So thank you guys for your attention. Um, I can be reached here at Dr. Short, dr.short at yahoo.com. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for your time. <laughs>